Basically, I was 30 years old, I was a housewife, I was discontent, there was something inside of me that I wanted to express. I read the biographies of artists, they were men, Degas and Gauguin and Van Gogh, Van Gogh. And uh, I saw that these people took other paths in life and they weren't afraid, they took risks. And so I left my marriage and started painting. And my professor really saw that I like movement more than paint on canvas. And he brought in clear leader, clear film, and I painted on it, projected it onto the canvas, and I fell in love with projected light. And from there I did many things, but eventually I went to film school at San Francisco State University and got a degree, a master's in film. Made 13 films in two years when I was a student. They were not for any classes, they were for myself. And that birthed um, a lesbian feminist cinema that I had no idea wasn't in the world yet. And then I went on to move to New York and accept the challenge of critical theorists who thought that my work was rather touchy-feely. And I was working at the time with structural filmmaking, which was in the form, minimalist art. So I took those kinds of qualities of showing the frame line, deconstructing cinema, and used it in a film called Optic Nerve, which is a 1985 about putting my grandmother in a nursing home. A very, very sad time for me. And that film was accepted into the Whitney Biennial in put me on the art map. And from there, I continued to work with the optical printer, a re-photography device, where I worked like a painter, selecting each frame, um, until the 90s, when I had this desire, and I think a lot of us did, with the return of identity politics in all art forms, to go back to my roots. And I made a film about history, really, why are some people left out of history? Who makes history? And is particularly concerned about gay and lesbian, transgendered, bisexual, asexual history. These, it was really heterosexuality was the norm for a recorded history. So I made a large film, my first long film, 77 minutes, Nitrate Kisses, and that screened at Sundance. The film that followed Nitrate Kisses was Tender Fictions. And that's a post postmodern autobiography. So I used my own archive rather than searching for someone else's. But I interrupt with text and questions, voices. I use different pronouns. I even become Bob Hammer in the film. So there's a lot to think about in terms of what's truth and what's fiction in biography and autobiography. And then I made the third film in that series called History Lessons which takes films and media made about lesbians by men and turns it on its ear to make a comedy through juxtaposition, cutting, soundtrack. And I did this because there was no lesbian history, except that made by men. And I felt like we have to recoup. You can't really build a culture without a history. So that was a lot of fun, history lessons. At age 70, I decided it was important to give back in particular to help another woman filmmaker. I found a young woman who was working in a laboratory here in New York City, a film lab. She ran the contact printer. So I talked to her, got to know her a little bit. She told me she hadn't made a film in five years. So I looked at her first film that she'd made at the Art Institute in Chicago. It was good. <laughs> it was very good. And I asked her if she'd like to collaborate with me and, in a way, be mentored. And she was thrilled. We're still working on it. It's very exciting. It will premiere at my retrospective here at MoMA on September 15th. It's called Generations. If we hadn't been treated unjustly, unfairly, if we had equal representation in cinema from the beginning, then jobs, employment, I mean, this is, you know, it's still, it's still not right. So when it's, you know, completely, everything is completely fair and even, then, you know, I'll probably be a humanist.
feminism will have been in the past because we achieved our goals.